All right, my clock says 2 p.m. Eastern, so I think we will go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to our ACCT Awards 101 Information Webinar. I'm Robin Matras Helms, Vice President for Membership and Educational Services here at ACCT, and I will be your MC for this afternoon's session. To give you a sense of our agenda, we will start with our welcome and some introductions, and then we'll do a brief overview of the awards and the nomination process, including our regional and association awards and the relationship between those two categories of awards, eligibility, some resources as you prepare nominations, and then frequently asked questions. And from there, we'll move to questions and discussion with all of you, and then wrap up with some last insights and advice. I will note that the chat will be open throughout the session, so please feel free to share your questions, comments, and insights. We'll be keeping an eye out for that, and it's helpful for others to learn from your experiences as well. Some introductions to start with. We are joined by Ji Hang Lee, our president and CEO. Ji Hang, do you want to give a little wave? Excellent. And then my colleague, Kilo Savalakto, who is our director for member engagement. She will be helping us with the chat this afternoon. And then we're very happy to be joined by Mary Lou Hernandez, who is executive assistant to the president and governing board at Central Arizona College. She is also the 2022 recipient of the Association Professional Board Staff Member Award. And uh, that's, a, that's one of our big awards. So a big uh, congrats to Mary Lou again, and great to have you with us today. Thank you. And I'd like to actually just turn it over to Jihang for a moment to give us a little welcome and talk about how the awards fit into our work here at ACCT. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, to talk about the ACCT Awards Program. Uh, the ACCT Awards Program is our opportunity to honor our, our trustees, our presidents, our faculty members, our diversity equity award uh, programs, and our professional board staff members. It really is a, um, a significant opportunity to recognize unsung heroes at our institutions. Uh, and first and foremost, it is a program that is a member benefit back to all of you. Uh, there is no fee attached to participating in our awards program. So we really strongly encourage you to apply for these programs. Uh, and it is a significant um, uh, benefit for all of you to recognize these individuals on your campus. Um, we can't stress it enough uh, for all of you to really uh, showcase this opportunity for each individual on your campus. But again, uh, this is something that we do uh, on behalf of the ACCT Board of Directors, as many of you who participate and come to our ACCT Congress. You all know we make a big show of this. Uh, we do it. We invest a significant amount of time during our luncheons and we, uh, for, we do a whole evening event. Uh, for those of you who uh, school pass, we, we, you know, the chair and I get dressed up for our gala. And so we wear a penguin suit. Uh, well, I know uh, Rose won't be wearing a penguin suit this year, but uh, uh, this is something that we do uh, spend a significant amount of time to showcase uh, these uh, uh, great individuals uh, on our community college campuses. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Robin. Thank you, Ji Hang. And Mary Lou, I think we'd love to hear from you a little bit about what this process maybe was like for you and what this meant to you uh, in terms of your, your career to receive this award last year. Absolutely. I'm so happy to share this because it was an absolute experience. I mean, I just cannot um, express in words enough what it meant to me. Um, like Robin said, I was the uh, ACCT Professional Board Staff recipient for 2022. And I was just honored beyond words that my board would nominate me, much less receive the award at the event, the gala. It was just a beautiful experience to have my board there, my president there. I had my daughter come along. So it was just it, it was just such a privilege and an honor that I cannot even put into words what it meant to me. I have grown professionally, personally. I have gotten more involved with the PBSN, the Professional Board Staff Network, through ACCT, and we have been such a network, such a such a help to each other. And 
like I said, I would stress highly nominate, nominate, nominate and attend this amazing event. I plan this year, I believe all five of my board members are attending. So we're very much looking forward to it. It is just a wonderful event, wonderful organization that's just meant the world to me. Thank you so much, Mary Lou. Um, and great that everybody's coming back for Congress this year. I do remember your chairing section. It was very impressive. So, uh, oh, nice, you know, uh, I think me receiving this award, I can't say it meant more to them, but they sure acted like it. <laughs> yeah, were, we love that. Yeah, it was it was amazing. Excellent. Um, well, thank you. And and Jihang and Mary Lou, please chime in throughout as we go through the presentation. And um, you know, if you see questions in the chat, um, please feel free to jump in as well. We appreciate having you here. All right. So a little bit more information about the awards and the process. So as Jihang mentioned, the awards are really designed to recognize the tremendous contributions made by our trustees, equity programs that are member campuses, chief executive officers, faculty members, and professional board staff members. Each year, we invite ACCT members to submit nominations to be considered by the nomination committee, which is, consists of elected trustees and presidents from our member institutions around the country. To give you a sense of the suite of awards, our regional awards are in, the, we have five separate regional awards, and there's one recipient from each of our five regions, and we'll talk through what those regions are in a little bit more detail in a moment. But the trustee leadership award is for board members. The equity award goes to a board CEO team. The chief executive officer award is awarded to a president or CEO on a campus. The faculty member award to faculty and then the professional board staff member award to those enrolled like Mary Lou. The association awards have one recipient per award and these mirror the regional awards in terms of categories. This is the M. Dale Enzyme Trustee Leadership Award, the Charles Kennedy Equity Award, the Marie Y. Martin Chief Executive Officer Award, the William H. Meredy Faculty Member Award, and the Association Professional Board Staff Member Award. And we'll talk through in a moment the relationship between the regional awards and the association awards. This is a map of the ACCT regions, which are the basis for the distinctions for the nominating categories. Um, so I would just encourage you, if you're submitting a nomination, to just take a second look at the map. Uh, there are some things that the, the regions are designed to have a relatively equal distribution of our member institutions and our members. So there are some states for which maybe the region that it's assigned to is not 100% intuitive. So just do a double check as you're doing nominations and this map is available on our website. So back to the relationship between the regional awards and the association awards. So ACCT, as noted in that map, is organized into five discrete regions, Central, Northeast, Pacific, Southern, and Western. Each year, we present up to five regional awards to member nominees in each of the five regions, so a total of up to 25 awards. Regional awardees are formally nominated by, via a submission process, and nomination packages, as mentioned before, are evaluated by judges from within the nominees' respective regions. And then we present up to, we present the five association awards each year. The regional award recipients become the nominees for the association awards. So there is no process by which to be considered for an association award other than by winning a regional level award. In terms of who can be nominated and who can submit a nomination, all nominees must be on the board of or employed by an ACCG member institution at the time of nomination. And our regional award nominations may be made by two-year post-secondary institution boards, a state board for community colleges, a board of a state trustee association, or a university board of regents that controls the two-year post-secondary institutions in that state. But basically, overall, it needs to be a board, and it needs to be a board of an ACCT member institution. In terms of who is ineligible to be nominated, this includes current ACCT Board of Director members, past and present ACCT Board of Directors Executive TDB members, and we've got some additional details uh, in the notes on the slide here, current ACCT Professional Board Staff Network President and Vice President. And I will note that this is a change from previous years. It used to be that the full Professional Board Staff Network Executive Committee was ineligible for awards, but it is now just the President and Vice President who are ineligible and then non-members as well. 
ways to submit a nomination. You can do so online and from our website here, and we've got the links in the chat, there's an online nomination form. You can also download that nomination form and complete it and then email it to us. And then if you prefer, you can mail the nomination form and materials to us at our offices here in Washington, D.C. A little bit more details here on the nominating process. We've covered a number of these topics and this information is available on the website. Uh, I'll note a few things from the procedure for submitting nominations in terms of what is required. We do ask for a cover letter from the board outlining the board support. We ask to have a number of questions that get at their word criteria that are required to be filled in on the, on the form. We also ask for the nominee's resume of no more than two pages, and then a narrative statement not longer than 150 words to supplement the other materials. We are fairly strict on this length limit of a total of six pages. So if a nomination is submitted to us that's longer than that, we will go back and ask for that to be shortened a bit. No photos required at the time of submission, but if a candidate is selected for an award, we will come back to gather photos and other materials for publicity. So for additional questions, many of the answers are available on our website as well as in our awards brochure. So we mailed these out to all of our members a couple of months ago. Um, this is available as a PDF on our website as well. And then we're also happy, happy to answer questions by email. And I think there are some um, questions in the chat. Uh, so maybe we'll jump to those. Um, so post, uh, a good question from Agnes, are posthumous, posthumous awards available? Um, Jihang, do you want to speak to that a little bit? I'm, I'm writing a response, but I'll, I'll okay. provide one right now. Uh, so Agnes, uh, the current eligibility language for the trustee award, which is the only award that allows for uh, an individual who is not um, a current active individual uh, that is um, a member of ACCT, uh, the, the eligibility language stipulates any trustee or former trustee of an ACCT member institution. So and in this instance, uh, an individual that is deceased would be eligible for that award. Thank you. And then I see a question too. Um, I think this um, Kiara is asking about when we, um, uh, in terms of ineligibility, so current board members are not eligible um, for the award. And so the question is, does that mean board members from 2023, beginning of October, or the prior October. So um, maybe Jihang, that's another another good question. Um, in terms board, of current board members, what are we what are we specifying? So the 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 awards process is technically right now. So uh, you submit. Um, so the awards deadline is June June 5th. So you're submitting right now for the process. So in order, so you would have to be technically the on the board today. Thank you. Or on June 5th when you submit. Got it. Okay, so it's a, it's a real time, are you on the ACCT board in this moment? Correct. And I think in terms of eligibility, it's the same question. So um, if it's in terms of ineligibility, it's if you're on the ACCT board. Um, but then as of June 5th, when the nomination goes in, you must be a trustee at that time to be eligible for the trustee award. Correct. Great. Okay. And then... Um, Another question that came in uh, really nice in terms of kind of strategy uh, for submitting a nomination. So um, if a um, nomination was submitted in the past that I think probably was not successful. So then the question is, is it best to revise that nomination or to submit a new one that incorporates uh, additional information? I would say uh, sort of putting your best foot forward in the moment. There may be things in addition to what you're learning from the webinar um, here that maybe has changed in the background of the candidates that you're putting forward. So um, I would suggest, you know, again, the, the form, there should be, there. it allows for some cut and paste and, and whatnot, but I would take a look at what, um, you know, what maybe has changed since the last nomination um, and put that forward as well. Um, the awards committees do, uh, the members of the awards committees that are evaluating the nominations do change each year. And so um, it's not necessarily a question of has this awards committee that's evaluating this year's nominations seen the previous one. Um, likely they have not. So 
again, I would start kind of in the moment where you are now and 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 put your best foot forward. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I would just answer for Agnes. Um, Agnes, uh, while we love uh, the Community College League of California, and I got to see you uh, earlier this month, uh, we are uh, a, a board of member boards. Uh, so technically, uh, the member board has to submit the nomination. So the college district has to submit it. Thank you. All right, I think we have covered the questions that are in the chat right now. Um, feel free to keep adding them. Maybe I'll just ask, you know, Jihang and, and Mary Lou, as you've seen what we've talked about and covered so far, are there additional points of advice or suggestions or insights that you would add to the conversation for those listening as well? Uh, I have one. Um, so as somebody who uh, used to be Robin, <laughs> uh, and have uh, oversaw the awards program for a lot of uh, too many years to count. Um, one strong recommendation that we would make for all of our member institutions is uh, in enlisting the PIO or your grants officer and your institution as somebody to help with the, the narrative process uh, when you do your, uh, the, uh, when you submit the answers to your criteria questions. Those individuals are really good uh, in terms of, uh, you know, getting those questions answered. Um, additionally, for those trustees that have served on the ACCT board or committees, and you're trying to find additional information like years of service and things like that, if you need additional information around that, um, you should be reaching out to our ACCT offices. We can provide that type of information back to you if you don't technically know how many years a trustee served, for example, on our public policy committee, for example. We can provide that information back to you because we do have archival data on committee service. I think that's great advice. We did a, nominate a trustee that won the, the national award in 2020, and that is what we did. We used our, our marketing director, and she helped us a lot and, and um, just worked together and gathering all that information. And, and, and I think it's helpful for the ACCT you know, nomination committee to have, to have all that. Thank you. Uh, Mary Lou, actually, any other advice from being on the other side of the nomination process, as you mentioned, and, and, and a successful nomination, it sounds like, um, as you think through it, sort of as people are, are thinking about preparing their packets at this point? You know, I, I did not even know I was nominated until I got notified. So, yeah, I, it was quite a surprise and quite an honor. So, I think I had the easy part, and it was just an overwhelming, wonderful ride to to be there, to be part of it, to, to do it. I would encourage everyone nominate and, and just, just be active in this association. It is a wonderful experience. Thank you. Uh, perfect, we had another question come up about the online submission form has different places to upload files um, and would defer to Kielo on this one, I think. Um, do you need to upload each part of the nomination, the letter and the responses separately, or is it possible to do one PDF with the entire packet? Any advice on that? I'm going to double check and make sure there aren't any restrictions on the form itself. But really, I feel it's whatever works best for you. Um, when it comes to putting the packet together for the committee, we bring everything into one PDF. So if you want to have everything in one PDF, that's fine. If you prefer to keep things separate, we can work with that as well. So it really is whatever works best for you and is most comfortable for you, keeping in mind that six page limit. And I think we want the, I think exactly as Kayla said, for the, the nuts and bolts of the submission to be as unonerous as possible for you, uh, recognizing there are these different parts. And as, as Mary Lou Jihang said, uh, we'd rather you focus on taking the time to gather the content and bring the voices into the nomination form. And so anything we can do to be helpful um, and flexible in terms of the, the um, submission itself, uh, we will be happy to do. Um, and again, we review everything in terms of eligibility. So if, we, if you submit something and accidentally one of the files was left off, 
we will catch that and come back to you and ask for that information. Question here is, is the narrative basically an abstract of the overall nomination? Uh, that's a great question. Jihang, any advice on that? It is. Um, uh, it, the narrative is basically what we utilize if you are selected for the um, um, uh, what if you're selected and what we utilize in our awards program. So it's ba it's baked in, it's baked in. It's that beautiful, uh, I guess, magenta color. Um, uh, so we don't have to come back to you all so you, that you create another document for us. Um, uh, and when, just so we're clear though, um, just for the awards committee members, the awards committee only grades the criteria questions. So the grading process is each of just the questions. Uh, so each of the, when you look at the brochure, uh, there's, um, an array of questions. So I believe in the trustee one, there's nine questions. Um, I think the president has eight, um, each of those questions, uh, they start grading just on those questions. Uh, so the board letter, they won't grade the narrative. They won't grade. They just grade on the criteria questions. And just a little bit more information about the awards book, if you haven't seen it, this is uh, the inside, what it looks like. So all of our regional awards uh, recipients have a page with information and usually some information about their institution as well. Uh, so what we try to do, because there is a fairly tight turnaround from once the winners are identified till Congress, is gather as much of that information, as Ji Hank said, during the application process, so we're not creating extra work when we come back to you uh, to put together the awards for sure as well. But this goes out to all nominees and institutions and is distributed at Congress. Um, just a really nice uh, sort of summary of, of, of everyone and uh, their institution. Okay, any additional questions? Okay, great. Uh, so here's a question. Will you provide an example of an award submission to use as a guide for the grading criteria? So we do have on our website some sample uh, winner packets. Actually, there, Kayla just popped in the link so you can take a look at what successful nominations have looked like previously as well. And then on the awards forum, as, as Ji Hang said, that will give you a sense of what the review committee is, is looking for in terms of the criteria. Let's see. So can you clarify what part of the no more than six page packet? Uh, absolutely. I, let me put the um, deck back up for a second. Okay. Um, okay. So it is, um, so everything that's listed here is part of the six page uh, packet. So the cover letter, the, um, the questions and the criteria, the resume, and the narrative statement. So it's fairly, um, uh, you know, again, short in, in each of these things, but everything, there, there is nothing that is outside of the six pages um, that, or there's nothing required that would be outside of those six pages. All right. Um, well, I will also note that this we did record this webinar. We will post this on ACCC Connect. So all of you should have received in the last few days an invitation to join our new online learning and networking platform, ACCC Connect. So this information will be, a link to the webinar will be available there. We'll also post it on the website. You are welcome to distribute that to colleagues as well if you're working on a joint nomination. Um, I think my my other piece of advice would be, uh, you know, the nomination is designed to be not too onerous, but as everybody talked about, gathering input from uh, various voices on campus is helpful to strengthen the nomination. And so with the deadline coming up on June 5th, it's probably a good time to get started if you haven't started already. And um, Kayla just put in the chat her email, and we've got the general awards email address, so you know where to find us if you have additional questions. And I might just ask uh, Ji Hang and Mary Lou any last words of wisdom or advice for people who are thinking about putting a nomination forward. Mary Lou? Yeah, absolutely. I encourage you to to nominate. You know, it is it is it was a highlight for me that I will never forget, and such an honor. So please, you know, 
let, let's share that and, and and go through that experience with our colleagues. It's a it's a wonderful event, wonderful experience, wonderful award. It's just meant the world to me. All right, and I'll answer this question before I turn it over to you, Juhang. Um, to nominate a president would be under the CEO category. That is correct. Yes, we recognize that uh, the, the CEO is sometimes called the president or the chancellor or there's various categories. Um, but if it's, it, that, that's great. If you have any questions about where someone would fall, please just let us know and we'll have, happily clarify. Yes, and I, you know, I, I would, the only uh, additional guidance I would say is, you know, you know, as we all say, if you don't nominate, you can't win. <laughs> so, uh, so we strongly encourage colleges to submit nominations on behalf of their individuals at their institutions. Uh, you know, we all know that you all do faculties, uh, faculty awards each year. Uh, you know, think about your different programs uh, that might be for for equity. Uh, you know, and you know this is really an opportunity for all of you to showcase. Uh, the individuals at your institutions, um, and uh, we do think it's a significant uh, recognition that's uh, provided to all of you. So, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kilo, for keeping everything running with the webinar, and Mary Lou and Jihang for being with us. And thanks to everybody who tuned in. Again, we're grateful for your nominations. Look forward to receiving them. Let us know if you have any questions, and uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much. <laughs>